Hi there, Andrew here. We're putting feelers out for the idea of sponsors for the show. We have grown to a sizable audience of legal professionals, and we'd love to find a way to get the resources to continue to grow the show and spend more time on it. This might take the form of more longer form, maximum minimum competence episodes, or longer daily episodes, or maybe short interviews. We've had a couple of inquiries regarding sponsorship, but want to get feedback from all of you, the listeners. If you have thoughts or have a sponsor in mind that you think would be a good fit, shoot me an email at andrew at leahy.org. We're still very much in the brainstorming stage, so all ideas are good ideas. So ends the housekeeping segment. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. I'm your host for today, Gina Leahy, a real estate and finance attorney from Philadelphia. In today's episode, we have the Supreme Court declining to hear a prayer vigil establishment clause case, the Biden administration looking to increase taxes to fund Medicare, trouble in cheese paradise, and column Tuesday, where we invite you to read my co-host Andrew's latest column at Bloomberg Tax. Let's let bygones be bygones and get started on today's news stories. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected the appeal of city officials in Ocala, Florida, who were accused of violating constitutional limits on government involvement in religion by organizing and conducting a prayer vigil following gun violence that wounded three children. The plaintiffs, backed by the American Humanist Association, sued over legal harms they said they sustained attending the 2014 vigil in which uniformed police chaplains preached a Judeo-Christian message. The Ocala Police Department posted a letter on Facebook co-signed by the police chief promoting the vigil and urged fervent prayer to help reduce crime in the community. The American Humanist Association and several of its members sued in federal court and accused Ocala of violating the U.S. Constitution's Establishment Clause. The Establishment Clause is a part of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution that prohibits the government from establishing a religion or showing preference for one religion over another. This means that the government cannot pass laws that establish an official religion, use public funds to support religious activities, or favor one religion over another. The clause is intended to promote religious freedom and prevent the government from interfering with people's religious beliefs and practices. A judge in 2018 ruled in favor of the plaintiffs and awarded them nominal monetary damages of $1 each. The Atlanta-based 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals last July threw out that judgment in light of the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling in June 2022 expanding religious rights in the case of a Washington State public high school football coach who had been suspended for refusing to stop leading Christian prayers with players on the field after games. But the 11th Circuit decided that at least one of the plaintiffs had proper standing to sue because the prayer vigil had given rise to a legally recognizable injury. It seems the Supreme Court agrees. President Joe Biden's budget proposal includes raising payroll taxes on Americans making over $400,000 per year and giving the government new power to negotiate drug prices aimed at extending the solvency of Medicare for another quarter century. Specifically, the budget plan proposes raising Medicare taxes from 3.8% to 5% on annual income above $400,000 and eliminating a loophole business owners can use to avoid additional taxes. The plan would also dedicate the proceeds from a tax created as part of Obamacare to the Hospital Insurance Trust Fund. The White House estimates that $200 billion in prescription drug reform over the next decade will help bolster Medicare reserves. Biden's budget will specifically propose capping the cost of certain generic drugs, like those used to treat hypertension and high cholesterol, to $2 per prescription per month. The budget also eliminates the fee patients have to pay on up to three mental or behavioral health visits per year. The proposal is unlikely to become law given Republican control of the House of Representatives. However, it is a signpost for negotiations over government spending and offers the president a chance to publicly outline his priorities. American cheesemakers are concerned that they will lose the right to brand their products with names like Parmesan and Asiago, as trade agreements with the European Union increasingly push for geographical indications on products. 
Europe and the U.S. enforce geographic indications on products differently. In the U.S., they're treated like trademarks, but in the EU, they're covered under legislation. Greece's feta cheese, for example, is protected in Europe, meaning that U.S. produced feta isn't government certified and cannot be sold in the EU. Cheese, wine, rice, and meat products are at risk of losing common names that they have had for years, so trade groups are asking the Biden administration and Congress to protect these names in trade agreements. The EU maintains that geographical indications protect intellectual property in certain regions and give consumers a guarantee of authenticity, quality, and distinctiveness linked to origin. U.S. cheesemakers got a victory last week when a federal appeals court ruled they can still use the term Gruyere, even if their cheese doesn't come from that region of Switzerland and France. Still, as the EU continues eyeing free trade agreements with countries such as India, American producers say it's important for the administration to step in more proactively to safeguard common food names. Oh, look at that. There on the horizon, just barely taking form. It's my co-host Andrew's column. It must be Column Tuesday. Today, Andrew makes enemies of the for-profit tax preparation service variety. Didn't really get that. Intuit, the parent company of TurboTax, Mint, Credit Karma, and QuickBooks, spent $3.5 million on lobbying in 2022. Despite this, the conversation about for-profit tax preparation software has focused solely on TurboTax. Intuit is facing a lawsuit by the Federal Trade Commission for falsely advertising free tax services, and Senator Elizabeth Warren is calling for investigations into Intuit's hiring of former industry insiders. However, as Andrew writes in his column on Bloomberg Tax, Intuit is not the real problem. The for-profit tax preparation software industry as a whole is. Intuit's CEO argued against a government-run tax preparation system, saying it would create a conflict of interest. However, a third-party preparer that isn't vested with any dispute resolution ability can't do anything to rein in the party with the enforcement power. So preparers do nothing to stand in between the taxpayer and the tax authority. The IRS already has all the necessary information to process a return, and the entire tax preparation process looks like an arcane ritual. Last year's tax and climate law sets aside $15 million for the IRS to investigate how a federal system could be deployed. Much more than that needs to be committed to streamlining the chief source of funding for the government. The market expects Intuit to take the fall for the industry, but individual failings at Intuit are as much symptoms of making tax preparation a for-profit enterprise as they are corporate misdeeds. Thanks so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all of the topics touched on today are in our show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Gina and my co-host Andrew is at Andrew. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that might be interested in a story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is part of the ESQ Cast network of podcasts and streams on esqstream.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, put the pedal to the metal with your minimum competence. Minimum Competence.